for joining our Q4 Sage and Tech release webinar. My name is Kim Anselmo, and I will be kicking off our webinar this afternoon with a, just a couple quick housekeeping items. Uh, as you can see, you can minimize or maximize the webinar pane during the presentation by using those that red-orange arrow button. And also during the webinar, we would like to encourage you to ask some questions. You'll see a question box in the webinar window pane that you can use to type your question in and then click Submit. Our presenters will do their best to answer those questions during our Q&A session or during the presentation as well. Um, if we don't get to your question, we will certainly follow up with you after the webinar as well. Also, just to let you know, for audio settings, you can click either computer audio or phone call audio. Um, if you're having issues in one area, please look to switch and it might correct the issue for you. Next slide. And then also just to qualify for CPE credit. So um, just some guidelines around that. You must be active, you must actively respond to all the polling questions and stay on for the duration of the broadcast. And if you do have any technical difficulties answering to the poll questions, uh, we do have an email there, elevate at armaninollp.com. Do send them an email with your name, date of the session, along with your poll responses, as we know that can happen sometime as well. And with that, I would like to introduce our presenters for today, Irene Bushnell and David Gunn, and I will hand it over to them as I know they have a, a great amount of data to share with you today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Kim. Uh, hi, everyone. Pleasure to be with you today. Real quick, we're just going to talk about our learning objectives. Uh, first is to identify the new release features of your solution being intact. Um, we're going to demonstrate the new user experience and navigation so that you can adapt easily. And finally, uh, we're going to help you to manage the latest release of, this, of the solution for maximizing its potential. Uh, so next slide. Here are our learning objectives for today. Like Kim said, there's a lot of data, so we're not going to waste time going over this. We're just going to jump right in. So next slide. And first changes are going to be in administration and company. So next slide. Uh, first change here is the ability to mask employee social security numbers. So this is a new configuration option that was added. Um, and it's going to be, as you see in that screenshot to your right, the employee social security number masking. Basically what this does is it's going to mask all but the last four digits of the social security number in the employee um, record tab. Um, now we want to note that we do not really recommend storing your employee's social security numbers um, in intact, unless you do have a specific business process or a specific business a use case for this. Um, if you do, we really recommend that you go ahead and check off this box uh, just for increased privacy. Next slide. Uh, next is the ability to choose an administrative contact. Um, so if you've been in the, the company um, configuration page, you might have noticed that the main contact is now going to be called the administrative contact. Basically, this person is just going to be the main point of contact to receive any emails uh, that are related to admin related functions within your instance of Intact. You can set this up by going to company, setup tab, and then company. And then you'll see this drop down as shown in the screenshot to the right. Um, that drop down is only going to include users who are listed as full admins in the system and then they will go ahead and be the administrative contact once that's set. Next slide. And then finally, in company and administration, uh, we're just going to talk about a quick um, labeling clarification to attachments. So as we all know in Intact, attachment is not always just one thing. It can be like a container that can hold a group of files. And so to make this labeling more obvious throughout the system, um, there's been a couple of changes to certain fields. So you're going to notice that attachments in the system is now going to be labeled as attachment only in spots where one supporting document can be attached to a transaction or a record. And then you're going to see that select attachments is now going to be called select files to attach. And that's going to show that multiple files can be attached. Um, so a small change here, but hopefully going to help clarify some things. And next slide. And I'll hand it off to Irene for budgeting and planning. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Irene Bushnell, a senior manager here at Armanino. Happy to be on this presentation with you today, uh, walking through all of the new features in release four last Sunday. Let's go ahead and start with the polling question. I'm going to launch the polling question. The first polling question that we have today. Uh huh. David, can you read it? 
Do yes, you I see can. the Okay, yep, yeah. you'll have to read it. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how does your organization currently manage budgets? One, you created and reported from Excel. Uh, two, you created in Excel and imported into Intact for your reporting. You have an integration with adaptive planning. You use the Sage Intact budgeting and planning module or other. So we'll give a few 30 seconds, however long, Irene, you want to go to answer yeah, this. Yeah, we'll watch people. 65% are voted, so we'll... All right. Sometimes is the... Excellent. Everybody's doing a good job. All right. Budgeting process. Closing poll. Three, two, one. Clo oh, somebody closed it for me and shared results. Okay. Thank you. So it looks like it looks like a lot of people have an integration with adaptive planning. That's great. 29%. Uh, 24% are creating Excel and then importing into Intact. 24% are also creating from Excel just um, individually. 8% are using the Sage Intact budgeting and planning module, and then 16% said other. So awesome. Good, good, good information to know. Thank you. Uh, and yes, for those asking, you will receive a copy of this uh, slide deck after the, the presentation today. So let's talk about Intax budgeting and planning module. A couple of highlights. There's a lot of organizations that are using that now, uh, but a couple of the highlights, this particular release, you can now see when your dimensions from Intact do not have a mapping to a dimension in the Sage Intact Budget Planning, SIBP as it's known, a mapping table. Okay, so if something's missing, you're gonna be able to tell right away. And also, if you are in a multi-currency environment, you can now view your budget by the currency of each of your entities when you create and structure your budget by a particular location. So that's a nice new feature for the SIB product. Also, you can view the entire dimension hierarchy now. So when you're in the wizard uh, of the SIBP and you're bringing information in, uh, as you can see on the right there, you can see the entire hierarchy of your different dimensions. So that's really nice. As well as you can now drag and drop up to four levels. So they continue to expand uh, that drag and drop, make it an easier and easier uh, as, as you go. As a reminder, this is a separate subscription for this module. Uh, it's a wonderful module that Intact released a, a couple of, oh, well, now, David, probably almost two years, uh, but a really nice uh, module. If you need more information, reach out to your client manager. All right, great. Thanks, Irene. And we'll jump right into General Ledger. So a couple new changes here in General Ledger. The first of those is going to be the new Intact GL outlier detection. So what this is, it's a new AI and machine learning tool uh, that's going to be open for early adopters. And basically, this is going to be rolled out to those who are making use of the approval process within General Ledger. So the way the GL outlier detection works is that it's going to use your historical transaction patterns to go ahead and evaluate your transactions that are going through that approval cycle. I mean, it's going to go ahead and notify approvers of transactions that don't really match the regular pattern. So again, this works with GL approvals, and it's going to help um, provide your approvers with an extra heads up when something looks just a little bit out of the ordinary. Um, it helps to give an extra preventative control measure to really help ensure your accuracy as a whole. And because transaction patterns are different for every company, um, the tool when you respond to the outlier notifications, um, the tool is just going to evolve, it's going to get better, and it's going to adjust the evaluation over time. So again, for early adopters right now, if you are interested in this, uh, please reach out to your Intact account manager. Uh, they can help you get set up on this if it is something that you are interested in doing. Next slide. And then the other change in general ledger for this release is going to be the ability to queue dynamic allocations over time. So um, like I just said, this is a new improvement so that dynamic allocations um, can run historic runs of the same allocation, or sorry, historic runs of the same allocation can now queue. So why was this added? Let's take, for example, that you know you're at the end of the year and you determine that 
some of your monthly overhead allocations that you had run in the past are going to provide the best view of your performance for your annual review annual review at year end um, you're now going to be able to use those recurring transactions to generate those entries with just one click it's going to be a lot faster and going to get you that information a lot quicker um, and we do want to note here that this does require the add-on subscription to uh, sage intact dynamic allocations next slide excellent all right, let's talk about cash management, some nice new enhancements to cash management. We're going to go ahead and get in to Intact. So everybody should be able to see my instance of Intact now. I am under cash management, setup, credit cards, where we set up credit cards. So Intact has removed the credit card numbers associated with credit cards. If you had put in your credit card number before, which it was required, you'll notice that it's completely gone. So Intact removed the credit card number from Intact um, completely. They're no longer requiring it. N make note that it is also gone from any payment copies pages. It's gone from the credit card register report. If you had any custom reports that used uh, that you had that custom field for credit card on there, uh, you'll want to make sure on your custom report to go in and remove that because it'll be blank now. So no more credit card stored in Sage Intact related to your credit card. Bank and credit card account validations and security. Let's take a look at that in Intact. Top level here under cash management again on my checking account list. As of Sunday when the new release came out, Intact is locking down the GL account, the currency, and the location. You can see all three of these are grayed out. So as soon as a transaction is entered, these will gray out and will no longer be editable. So if you are creating a new checking account in Intact, make sure that you select the right GL account location and currency before you enter transactions. If you do go in and let's say that you set up a checking account and then you go in and you enter in uh, one transaction and you realize it's gone, if you can delete the transaction from Intact so that the transaction is gone, then you would be able to edit this. So if there are no transactions completely, you could come back in and edit this. As we all know, uh, if we were to go ahead and do an accounts payable transaction, uh, create a check and then void the check, the transaction is not gone. So in that scenario, you would not be able to edit it. So just be careful and make sure that as you add new checking accounts, that you do have those three items correct because they are no longer editable. Another uh, feature now, if you're using bank feeds, Intact is validating the currency field to the currency on the bank account, on the account at the bank, right? The bank account itself. So you'll want to make sure that that currency is valid when you're setting up a new account. A few small bank feed reconciliation enhancements. This is a couple of new fields related to matching and unmatching. Let's go ahead and get back over into Intact for just a minute. Here I am in cash management doing a reconciliation. I'm looking at some transactions here that are unmatched. So I have a bunch of unmatched transactions. Okay, if you go into a particular transaction here and you click on match, if that transaction had been matched before, and unmatched, you'll now see an audit trail of that. So you can see that I matched this transaction and then on 11.16, I came in and unmatched it. So on the match transaction screen, a couple of uh, nice fields here to help with the workflow if transactions are getting matched and unmatched. On the bank reconciliation feed itself, they've added a couple more enhancements related to adding transactions from the line level. You can see here I have a check debit on the left screenshot and notice under the action, I can go in and do a manual payment or create a journal entry. And on my slide on, uh, slide on the right, I have deposits, right? And the action there is an other receipt or create a journal entry. You will notice on my screen that other receipt is grayed out, and that's because I'm at the top level, and in fact, I'm in a multi-currency 
multi-base currency environment. And so I would have to enter that receipt at the entity level. And since I'm at the top level, it's grayed out. But you can see by the note here, IGC companies, you do need to create other receipts at the entity level. But that's nice that we have the ability to do manual payments now as well as other receipts. Another enhancement related to cash management is you will now have the ability to do one connection for multiple accounts. Currently, you in Intact, prior to this release, you had to go in and set up a connection for each bank account. So let's say that you have five accounts at your local bank and you want all of those to feed into Intact you'll be able to set up one connection and all five of those counts will appropriately, appropriately it's a fun word, appropriately feed to the uh, checking account in Intact. This feature is not generally available. So make note of this, and yes, you're gonna get this slide deck after, but if you want to have it enabled for your company, send an email to bank-rec at sage.com and then keep an eye in your inbox for details with your specific starting date so that you can use this new feature. Love to show you a screenshot of that, but I can't do that since it's not enabled in our demo company. David, what's new in inventory? Yeah, thank you, Irene. Just one major change here in inventory in this release, um, and that's going to be cycle counts with the ability to verify your inventory quantity periodically. So cycle counts, this is a great new option to use cycle counting to regularly count really smaller subsets of your total overall inventory uh, to help you just keep more accurate records of your inventory over the span of time. So with cycle counting and doing cycle counting, you have a bunch of different benefits. One of those being that you're just gonna have more continuous business operations. Um, sometimes you might have to just completely shut down at your end to do a full year end count. With cycle counting, you're gonna kind of eliminate the need for that and you're gonna have more continuous business operations. Um, you're also gonna have more improved accuracy of your stock levels. And then finally, you're just gonna have better operational insight overall. Um, you're going to be able to correct certain business processes that you might have more quickly if some of your count that you're taking on a periodic basis reveals any inefficiencies. So you can go ahead and correct that more quickly than you would um, if you're not taking um, those periodic looks. So cool new uh, functionality here within, invent within the inventory module. And then in multi-entity, uh, one small change here, but I think one that might be pretty useful. Um, and that's going to be the ability to access the top level, even if you're restricted to entities. So you might know that when you restrict a user to an entity, or if you are an, a user that's restricted to an entity, you do not have access to the top level. Um, that's now changed in this release. There's now this new configuration checkbox that's going to be on the user record, specifically in the user entities tab. You can see it in that screenshot below. Check off that box. And what this is going to do is it's going to default the user when they log in to have access to the top level. This is also going to um, allow them to edit and view and manage any objects that are also created at the top level. So this can be customers, vendors, bills, other dimensions. So this is a great option for them to um, have access to those dimensions, but not be able to necessarily um, create or do anything within the top level. Based on their permissions, right, David? Based on the permissions, exactly. Good call out. Excellent. And next slide. And reporting in insights. Okay, so reporting in insights, we got a lot going on here. So we're just going to go ahead and, and fire it off. First of these being um, the reporting only dimension member. So Irene is sliding into Intact right now. And what you're going to notice is that on some of the dimensions, um, specifically department, location, class, customer, vendor, projects. Um, in the status dropdown, there's going to be a new um, option here that's called the active non-posting. Basically, what the active non-posting is, is it functions similar to that of inactive in the past, but what this does now is it makes it much more easily selectable for your reporting needs. In the past, if you did set to inactive, there were some hoops that you kind of had to jump through in order to get that on your reporting. Um, now with this configuration option, it's gonna be a lot easier to go ahead and add it to your reports. 
Um, the status itself as well also makes sure that when this um, gets set to um, active non-posting, it's no longer going to show up in your transaction dropdown. So basically what Irene's showing right here, we checked off the box for department 300. It's no longer available to be used within a transaction, but if we do go to a report, we're going to see that it's still very accessible, easy to get to. Um, and so this is a, a really great new option um, for your reporting purposes. If you do want to have a dimension um, that you still want to report on, but you don't want transactions to be sent to. Awesome, next slide. And then another one we're also going to jump into intact to show is um, the H in HTML reports, which are the live reports, the ability to do the freeze frame. So for increased usability, you're now going to have this option to freeze the first column on your financial reports that are being viewed in real time. Irene's showing it right there on the screen. All you're going to have to do is hit the cog up there at the top right of your report and hit freeze first column. Once this is done, basically what's that gonna do is it's gonna keep that first column set there so you, you can see what those figures represent. Um, if you do have, like in this report, a bunch of different columns that have data as part of it. So we wanna note here that this preference is sticky, meaning that if you go back into this report at a different time, you're still gonna see that that first column is gonna be set, it's not gonna move. If you do wanna go ahead and change that, you're gonna do it the same way that you would put the preference on that report by clicking the cog at the top right, and then it'll say unfreeze the first column, and you'll go ahead and be able to move or maneuver it that way. I think I hear excitement in the background. <laughs> Yay, right? That is yeah. so nice to be able to, to scroll and still see that left column. That is an awesome, awesome new one. Thank you. Indeed it is. Uh, next slide. Um, next is the Dashboard Insights. Um, so in this specific part of the release, there's going to be a few new out-of-the-box dashboard metrics that were created specifically uh, for insights into healthcare and hospitality organizations. And so these new dashboards were really designed to provide um, more so a library of pre-built metrics that can be used as a starting point to suit all of your organizational needs. Um, or as a way to just provide a really fast path to adding um, these metrics into other dashboards. So if you're interested in this, you are part of the healthcare or a hospitality organization um, to uh, install these dashboards and the elements that go along with them. You're just gonna go to dashboards, you're gonna go to the all tab and then go to dashboards and then you're gonna go into the dashboard library. From there, you'll locate the dashboard, you'll install it. You could have the option to change the name within that and then once you're all done, just hit save and it'll go ahead and move that dashboard in. Uh, next slide. Um, next is the ability to run reports on inner entity transactions. Um, so Sage Intec now provides a packaged IET inner entity transaction a custom report that's going to be pre-configured for much more easy reconciliation. Uh, you're going to be able to use the report package as a, a really nice starting point for all of your reconciliation and reporting as it comes to uh, any inner entity transactions. So the new custom report is gonna uh, enable viewing your source journal entry dimensions. And since um, IET entries and source journal entries are both derived from GL journal entries, this is really gonna help improve your reconciliation and hopefully bring down some of those data entry errors. So a really cool new uh, option here. And we just wanna note that the report only includes transactions beginning on May 15th, 2020. So if you're looking for anything behind that, just know that it's not gonna show uh, in these reports. Next slide. Um, smaller addition here, but one to note for sure is the new custom report writer object. Um, that new object is gonna be called the GL budget, and this has been added for use in the custom report writer, the CRW. Um, so this new object is basically gonna allow you to use the custom report writer to report out your budget figures. Um, so for example, you're gonna be able to add the GL budget data source to your custom report if you wanna go ahead and customize the standard report that exists for your budget. Uh, next slide. All right, we're almost to the end there. Um, next slide here is gonna be the interactive custom report writer, the ICRW enhancements. Um, one of the first enhancements here is going to be that there's new time attributes such as year, quarter, month that have been added to help you go ahead and sort out your dates. 
and they have also added three new reporting areas. So the first of those being uh, the GL budget versus your actuals. What this is going to do is it's going to provide your budget and your GL details, including your name budget and your GL entry header and detailed line item info. Um, the second added here is the GL budget, which we kind of just talked about. It's going to go ahead and provide budget header and detail information. And then finally is the VAT and GST tax. Um, and this is going to provide general tax details that are applied to your sales of goods and services. Next slide. And then finally here, wrapping up reporting and insights is going to be the interactive visual explorer early adopter program. So the IVE or the interactive visual explorer um, is an analytics and a data visualization application or tool uh, that really enables you to explore and interact with your data and create these visual stories that you can share with your upper management and your leadership. Um, and so here you're going to be able to apply a bunch of different presentation styles to your data within the system uh, to help gain a greater understanding of the data that you have as a whole. And so when you discover really important trends in your data, uh, you're going to be able to capture that really easily uh, by creating these stories, again, that you can revisit later or share with others um, in the system or externally as well. So it's a really cool new feature. It is an early adopter program again. So if you are interested um, in looking for this functionality, please reach out to your intact account manager. And with that, I will hand it over to Irene. Thank you. Let's go ahead and do another polling question, please. Polling question number two, launching. David, I'll let you read. Sure. Is it going? Yes, it is. Okay. So the question here is, which modules in Intact does your organization use to generate customer invoices? Uh, please check all that apply here. So it's going to be accounts receivable, order entry, projects, contracts, and last option, we do not generate invoices in Intact. Give people just a little bit. I'm not seeing it moving. Maybe it's just my screen. Oh, lots of questions coming in. There's no option to vote. Uh-oh. Did it click twice? Uh, oh, it looks like it went straight to the results. Uh, no, I can't restart it, Brian. I don't think I can restart it. So sorry. I don't know what happened there if I somehow yeah, clicked let, it. Let, let me create another one. Hang on, please. All right, I'll, you go ahead and create another one and I'll continue on. You let me know when it's ready and then we'll we'll do it, okay? Thank you. Sorry about that. I don't know if something clicked on my computer or whatever, but we'll get that polling question back up in just a minute. In the meantime, let's talk about contracts. Contract module is a subscription. Many of you are using the contract module. It's awesome uh, for doing contracts with customers. One of the new features is the ability to consolidate invoices by customer now. So if you have a contract, if you have multiple contracts for one customer and you want to have an invoice sent to the customer for multiple contracts, you have the ability to do that now. The invoice grouping criteria includes generating invoices by entity and or by transaction currencies. So uh, dependent on your environment and how that's set up, you might have a little bit of uh, different information there. Nice feature to have though for those of you using contracts. If there are different values, what happens? What, what, what is the conflict resolution? So if there are different values for the following fields on the contract, right? So you have different contracts and your terms are different on each contract, Intact is going to go look at the customer record and pull in the term from the customer record. Same is true with the bill to contact. So if there's multiple bill to contacts on the contracts, then it's going to go to the customer record. Ship to contact has that little asterisk there um, because there are a lot of settings that affect the conflict for that particular item. So if your order entry configuration has that enable line level ship to contact set to true, and then there's a conflict, the invoice header ship to contact will default to the customer ship to contact, 
but the line items shipped to contacts won't be affected. In other words, they won't be updated to the main customer one. Okay, so some conflict resolution in if you are going to use that consolidate invoices. What about custom fields? You have some custom fields on contracts, okay? If the contract and the order entry invoice have identical custom fields of the same data type, then the information is going to transfer over just like you would expect it to, okay? If the custom field values are different across contracts and you generate an invoice by customer, then that custom field value is going to be empty because Intact won't know how to resolve that conflict unless the custom field has a default value. So remember when you set up a custom field, you kind of pick what type of custom field it is. If it's a pick list and it has a default value, then Intact would pull in that default value if there was a conflict. Important note down here, read the entire release notes. If you are interested in consolidating invoices, their help text has a lot of good examples and information to help with that, uh, to make sure that you understand what, what all will happen if, if there are conflicts. But those are some of the basic ones. A couple other contract enhancements. You can now automatically, intact, not you, but intact will now automatically calculate prorated prices when in fact a contract's line start or end month is a partial period, okay? And this feature currently supports contracts where billing frequency equals monthly and contract lines where flat fixed amount frequency equals include with every invoice. Lot, lot going on here. If you guys are using the contract module, it's kind of making sense. Uh, look for support for other billing frequencies in the future, but currently it's flat fixed amount frequency uh, for this partial month billing. One journal or two. You'll want to go into your configure contract settings and you'll notice now that you have the ability to have one journal rather than two. In the past, configuration required two separate journals, one for the current revenue, one for your legacy revenue recognition. Okay, so now you have the option to have um, one journal if you want to. And again, uh, there's too much to cover in, in this session, but if you want to convert to one journal instead of two, um, then you have some options related to that. And so you'll want to read through that and make the right decision. And of course, call on us if you need some help or if you're not quite sure exactly what that means. Some usability enhancements. Um, notice now, this is really nice, you guys, at the top of the transaction history tab, you now have column headers with the ability to filter that list with column headings like we're used to seeing in lists in Intact. And yes, it does support the wildcard percent field, which is really nice. There's also drill down to renewal history and the contract ID and name are now displayed on the contract page title. So get into your contracts. Uh, you're gonna see these nice enhancements related to the contracts in Intact. All right. Are we ready with the polling question, Brian? Yeah, I like okay, there it goes. I just have to not touch it now and let it answer. Yeah. Thank you. So the polling question here again is, which modules in Intact does your organization use to generate customer invoices? AR, order entry, projects, contracts. We don't generate invoices in Intact. And remember to check all that are gonna to apply to your organization. All right, excellent. Five more seconds. Closing polling, three, two, one, closing polling. And sharing right. results. So it looks like 30% answered accounts receivable. 39, 30. mine says. Yeah. Oh, sorry, 39, apologies. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 34 for order entry, 2% for projects, 13% for contracts, and 39% also say that they do not generate invoices in Intact. All right, good to know. Helpful as we go through the presentation today, thank you. All right, David, accounts payable. Yeah, let's jump right into it. 
Um, first change here, I think a lot of people are probably going to appreciate, and that's going to be more flexible bill approval process. So what this is here is it's a new functionality that's going to go ahead and hopefully eliminate some of the time and the headache uh, that you can feel sometimes for just declining bills based on really small issues. And the hope of this new change is to help really speed up your workflow and your overall approval process within accounts payable. So you're now going to be able to, um, at approval time when a bill is in your queue for approval, you're going to be able to add, edit, or remove lines on the bill as long as there's no change to the total amount. Um, you're also going to be able to add attachments or edit the reference numbers on the bill. And then finally, you're also going to be able to change the due date or place the bill on hold. So uh, really cool stuff here. Again, hopefully uh, with the um, overall goal of taking some of the headache out of uh, the approval process. Next slide. Next is the ability to exclude credit card transactions, uh, CC transactions from your AP aging and your AP ledger reports. Um, and so as you may know, credit card transactions post to accounts payable immediately, but they don't post to the general ledger until that charge is completely paid. So what this can do sometimes and what we see is that this can unbalance your AP ledger and your vendor aging reports so that they don't always tie out properly to the general ledger report. So with this release, um, you're now gonna be able to exclude these credit card transactions when you're running both the ledger and um, AR, or sorry, AP aging reports. Uh, simply to do this, you're just gonna open up that vendor aging report, that AR ledger report. You're gonna just check off that box that's in the screenshot to your right um, that says the exclude credit card transactions from the report. That's gonna be in the filter section of the report. And then it's gonna go ahead and just simply remove those when you run your AR, AP or your AP, uh, sorry, AP aging or AP ledger reports, getting tongue tied there. Next slide. And then the final change in AP, uh, this release is gonna be the ability to import adjustments as GL transactions. And this also does uh, flow over to the AR module as well. So previously, um, if you've been importing adjustments, you would maybe have noticed that they only posted as historical transactions just to the AP or the AR subledger. In this release, there's now a new option. You're gonna see in the screenshots below, um, two little radio buttons that give you the ability to check off whether you want them to post as live transactions to the general ledger or if you want them to post as historical um, to the sub ledger. So the, the GL, the general ledger option here is a new option um, if you are looking to import those adjustments. And that's accounts payable. Excellent, accounts receivable. Let's go ahead and do a quick polling question. I'm gonna go ahead and select polling question number three. Um, I gotta make sure I get the, oops, somebody started it for me, I think. Okay. So the polling question here is, which of the following custom email templates do you have in Sage Intact? Please check all that apply. It's gonna be for order entry, purchasing. We send the standard Intact emails from accounts receivable. Or the last option, we don't send customer or vendor emails out of it, in fact. All right, everybody's answering. Closing polling, three, two, one, closing. Sharing results. All right, so it looks like 27% of people uh, use order entry, 10% in the purchasing module, 15 say they send the standard intact email from AR, and 58% say that they do not send customer or vendor emails from intact. Okay, good. Good, so some of you are gonna be excited because there's a new feature that you're gonna hear about in just a minute uh, related to the ability to send custom invoices from AR now. Uh, that's the reason for the polling question, but let's start with a few other exciting things in the accounts receivable module. And let's go ahead and get over in intact here. All right, let me close this. We're done with this one. I wanna get back in here in accounts receivable. Okay, so there's a brand new screen called Receive Payments New. 
So the old screen is still there and then there's a brand one that's received payments new. If you go to the overview tab and you work from the over to overview and you click receive a payment, you will be in the new window. So what kind of fun things can we do in the new window, the make payments window here? Um, we have the ability to add a memo field now. So you'll see that there's a memo field down here, right here, so a payment memo. I know some organizations wanted to be able to put in a memo related to the payment, so that's a very nice new feature. Okay, this next one is really exciting, the ability to search by invoice. And this is not very apparent, so uh, make sure you remember this because it's like, well, where do I search? It doesn't like ask me for an invoice. You literally come down here in Intact and you put in an invoice number in this field and then it will pull up the invoice uh, based on that field. So if I start typing and hit enter, it pulls in the invoice, see that? So I literally just put an invoice here, I didn't fill out anything else on the screen, and then Intact came along and populated the customer, and then I, of course, would uh, finish the screen if it's a check, record, transfer, whatever. So really nice, right? You can just literally, in this, the grid, enter in an invoice number. If you don't know the customer on something, you've got the invoice number right there, and then you can go ahead and, and uh, it'll, it'll bring in the rest of the information. So very nice, and this is in your slide deck, so you'll get a copy of this to remember that you've got that feature. It took me a few minutes to figure out how they did that. Filter sets, so just like we saw over in accounts payable bills, you now have the ability to do filter sets. I'm gonna go ahead and just shrink my screen just a little bit so you can see uh, the whole screen here. Over here on the right, you'll see I have the ability to select invoice. So that's the new button, okay? Based on what you have chosen here, if I click on select invoice, now that the Monster Inc. is my customer, notice that all of the Monster Inc. customer invoices are here. So this is the select invoice screen. Here is where you can build filters. So you can come in, you can create a new filter. So if there's something in particular that you wanna be filtering for on a regular basis, uh, you can come in, you'll see that you've got fields here related to invoices. And so you can do filters and apply criteria and then save the filter if that's helpful for you in finding invoices. So with this new screen, it's beneficial if you have lots of invoices. If you have one or two invoices per customer, then the, the new screen might not be as beneficial. Let me show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna go ahead and just cancel and come back out. So in the old screen, when we made received payments, right? As soon as we picked a customer, so in the prior screen, we pick our Monsters Inc. and we hit enter or tab, and then here's all of our transactions. In the new screen, I'm gonna come in to receive payments. If you click on receive payments new here, it takes you to the list of posted payments. Okay, so it's gonna bring you to all the posted payments just like you would expect. I can click the add button or I can click the plus next to this to add a new payment. I can go ahead and put in my customer, Monsters Inc. now. It does not bring in any invoices. So this screen is really nice when you have lots of invoices and you wanna be able to select them. That's where this is very helpful. So click on select, you decide which invoices you wanna bring into the screen, add selected, and then close this little pop-up. So now instead of seeing you know, all 20 invoices for a customer, I'm just focusing on the few that are here. Okay, so it, it's a little bit different in how it navigates through the, the system. But there's a lot more features that are here as well. So now we also have the ability to apply payments based on invoice line items. Okay, so if I have a payment in here, let me put in a payment of, let's say we'll put in $15,000 payment, I can come to the line details of this invoice and I can apply payment here. So I can pay this one off, but I can leave this one at zero because I only want to apply 4,500 to this line. And while I'm in the screen, I want to show you that you also have the ability to do credits by line item in an invoice now payment invoice, right? So when you're applying a payment, you wanna go ahead and use this credit on this 
particular line. That's not going to work. Hold on, sorry. Type and talk at the same time. So you have that, that visibility in here to be able to do things at the line detail level. Really nice ability there for that. Okay, so those are all in the slide deck, that ability to uh, be able to apply those and again, apply credits as well. And the good news, AR now supports custom email templates. If you do not have order entry or purchasing installed, you might have not ever gone to this feature. Under company here, I'll go ahead and make my screen bigger again. Company, setup, email templates. Okay, this is where you could create awesome looking, nice email templates in order entry and purchasing. Now you have the ability to do the same with an AR invoice, AR statement, and of course contract, order entry and purchasing. So if you've been waiting to customize your AR invoice emails, it's, it's available, very nice. Next up is entity tax ID merge field in AR on your printed document templates if you want the tax id of the entity to print there's the field that you can put on your word printed document and it will be there and available we already talked about importing ar adjustments as a gl david showed that a screenshot just a few minutes ago and you can now do negative line items on a manual deposit. So remember, a manual deposit bypasses the need to enter an invoice and then apply the payment. You do that all in one step. And before, you could not have a negative line item. But now, as you can see in the screenshot, uh, if you do have a manual deposit to enter, you can go ahead and put in a discount or a negative line item for that invoice that's generated as part of the process. Very, very nice features in, in accounts receivable. Platform and web services, uh, lots of, a few things in here. One of them is the Action UI. I'm not gonna go through each of these. Again, you're gonna get this. Most of you don't um, relate to a lot of this as kind of behind the scenes coding stuff, but there's a trigger log. You can reorder the menus on the platform menu, some different things that people uh, use. So if you have an IT person involved, make sure that they uh, see the platform service enhancements and order entry so in order entry now you have a new option to enable a cogs journal entry in setup so you can see that in your screenshot here down below so if you want to have additional entries happening related to inner entity on your cost of goods you can set that up so that it'll actually go ahead and do that in your company on the cogs portion of the transaction okay future postings so as we all know in accounts receivable and in accounts payable when you go in uh, to the configuration you can have warnings for transactions posted in the future there was never a setting for that in order entry in the past and now the uh, setting is there so under order entry configuration as you can see there's a checkbox use ledger and sub ledger restrictions for future posting dates in other words um, look at AR and if AR says warn on a future date or if if AR says don't allow a future date then you can have that that uh, same setting on order entry okay all right let's keep going David purchasing you're up oops sorry I had a little bit of trouble getting myself off mute thank you um, so purchasing only a few few small changes here um, again, definitely worth noting. First of those being that purchasing allocations are now extended to all transactions. So in 2020 release one, when we gave this webinar, uh, you might remember that um, allocations were enabled for purchasing transactions that posted to accounts payable. Now in this release, um, you're gonna be able to assign those allocations to all transactions in your purchasing workflow regardless of if they're posting or not. Um, and so Irene is going in there and on the transaction definition itself, um, there's gonna be that little checkbox right there that she's circling, uh, the enable allocations. That's gonna how you're um, 
going to go ahead and enable that functionality to extend to all your transactions. Yeah, and in the past it disappeared depending on the, the type that you chose, but now it's it's there no matter what the type is. Yep. Great, and then the other change in purchasing for this release um, is the ability to prevent future transaction posting. So in general ledger and accounts payable, you have the ability um, to stop transactions that had future GL posting dates from being created. Now, previously, before this release, there was no way in the purchasing module, no configuration option um, or option at all um, to handle how purchasing transactions with future dates were, were handled. Um, and so in this release, there's been a new configuration option added in the purchasing configuration menu. It's in that screenshot to the right. It's the use ledger and sub ledger restrictions for future posting dates option. Um, to and so basically what this option does is that when you turn it on, the thresholds that are configured in both the general ledger and um, accounts payable modules are now going to flow directly through your purchasing transactions, depending on where they are posting to. Um, and we just want to make a note here that this is not applicable to any recurring transactions, recurring transaction templates that you have set up. Which I believe is true also in the order entry. I don't think I said that, but that's true in the order entry setting as well. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. All right, taxes, 1099s. Intact has some updates to this. We talked about this in the last release and it's official now. So the 1099 miscellaneous box seven is gone. It is no longer available, okay? So you can no longer do 1099 miscellaneous box seven. The new 1099 NEC non-employee compensation form is available for non-employee compensation. When you go into accounts payable, and you're adding a vendor and you do the 1099, you're gonna see the option to be able to pick uh, the 1099 NEC. Okay, for vendors, this is just a note, if you had vendors that are using box 14 of the 1099 miscellaneous, miscellaneous uh, no action is needed. Intact is automatically capturing those amounts in box 10 because those were moved on the, the 1099 miscellaneous box 10 uh, box 14 moved to box 10, all of that's been automatic. However, there are things that you need to do to do your migration of your 1099 miscellaneous box seven values to the new form, okay? Uh, you'll want to read the instructions. Intact has very good instructions step-by-step -step of what you need to do to do that. It's not difficult. We'll also be doing an Academy uh, Watch and Learn class in January about 1099s with all sorts of tips and tricks on, on what you do with 1099s. So keep an eye out for that email. Uh, but you can start the process now if you want to follow the information that's in there. So be prepared. 1099 box seven is gone. Sage Intelligent Time. Who has heard of that before? This is a new feature that's uh, released, I believe, last quarter, SIT, Sage Intelligent Time. It's an AI-powered digital time assistant, okay? And what it does is it looks at activities on your email, your calendar, uh, browsers or files, and it suggests activities for the timesheet. So if you're doing timesheets in Intact or expense reports, you can use this SIT, Sage Intelligent Time product, and have it actually be filling out your timesheet and your uh, expense report. So most of us, when we have meetings or we're doing things, right, we put those on our calendar. And so this product is going and looking at those and then allowing you to pick and choose which ones you want to put on the on the uh, on your intact time or expense records. Sorry, I had to swallow. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Uh, this uh, SIT also now allows for approval or declining timesheets directly from the uh, SIT. So you don't have to do it over in intact if you've got the the mobile app. Um, you can do it right through the mobile app. So improvements with this new module. If you're interested in that, again, uh, your client manager is your go-to person here at Armenino to learn about those kind of new modules, et cetera. 
All right, polling question number four. All right, the question here is, which of the following new release features were of most interest to your organization? And please check all that apply. Is it the new AR receive payments window? Accessing the top level when restricted to one entity? The active non-posting option in dimensions such as departments? The new inter-entity reporting package? Or combining contract invoices for one customer? See what people are interested in, and then we'll answer a couple questions that are in the queue. We have a couple more minutes. We did good. David and I were worried about this. There was so much to cover. We were worried, but we are spot on, David. Yeah. All right. Ending polling. Three, two, one. Ending polling. Sharing results. All right. So it looks like 54% of people say the new AR receive payments nice. window. I nice. definitely agree. I think that's going to be an awesome one. 26% uh, say accessing the top level when restricted to one entity. Oh, wow. 30% say the active non-posting option in dimensions such as departments. 24% say the new inter-entity reporting package. And then 19% say combining contract invoices for one customer. So a lot of varied results here and a lot, lot of good stuff in this release, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Intact did a lot. Uh, so in conclusion, we've covered a lot of things. Again, you're going to get this slide deck. We're going to answer questions here for a few minutes. Don't forget about the Armanino Academy where you can learn uh, lots more about Intact. We're doing more and more watch and learn and hands-on classes all the time. So you'll want to go check that out if you haven't been out there. Uh, one of the questions, why didn't Intact map the miscellaneous box 7 to the NEC box 1? Uh, that's a really good question. I don't know why they didn't just automatically map that. They, I'm guessing it has to do with the data structure. So it wasn't something that they could just easily do since it was a whole new form. Um, I'm guessing that's probably the main reason. So don't have a better answer than that for you. How do you write off penny differences of the payments on an invoice? So in other words, somebody sends in an, a payment and they're a few pennies short or they're a few pennies over. An intact creates an overpayment, right? As far as that, if they do that, uh, what you need to do is go in and do an adjustment document. So you would create an adjustment, credit memo or debit memo, depending which way you wanted to do it, and then apply that uh, to the outstanding overpayment or underpayment. Um, I don't know that there's any way to automate those penny differences at this time. David, I don't know if you've seen anything uh, through customizations or anything on how you can automate writing off a penny difference. I think it's uh, pretty much still just a manual process of creating an adjustment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I've seen as well. Okay. Will the old AR receive payment screen be removed in the future? Probably, but I don't know that it's going to happen anytime soon. When they did the new release webinar with us as VAR partners, they didn't say that it was going away anytime soon. Uh, the old payment screen is still nice for people who have just, you know, a few invoices with their customers and they just want them to automatically populate versus the option there uh, where right now you have to go into select invoices. My guess would be, and I don't know this for sure, so you can't quote me, but you know how last uh, two releases ago in accounts payable, there was a new setting in accounts payable. Let's just go look at this real quick. I know we're about out of time, but under accounts payable setup, configuration there was a setting down here under the bills to have it automatically populate all of the bills due when you open the screen um, I think it's down a little bit farther right here so so when you automatically open the pay bill screen uh, populate it with all of the bills that way you didn't have to apply or click a filter my guess will be if and when they remove the old payment AR payment screen they'll do a configuration setting that allows you to auto populate that with all of the invoices for a customer just like it is now uh, we'll, we'll make sure David and I'll make sure we go put that as a, a suggestion in the in the community 
but we haven't heard of it going away anytime soon. All right, what other questions? I saw uh, one on here um, about the freeze report, um, and someone asked if the report is sticky per user or poor report. Um, that's going to be on a per user basis. It's kind of set on your own preferences. Makes sense. Uh, someone asked about it being on the dashboard, and no, because of course dashboards don't have the little, what, what do they call that icon up there in the top? David, the, on the report, what's that little gear gearbox? The gear. Yeah. So, so on on the dashboard reports, you you have the scroll, but I I'm don't think that that's staying. I didn't test that, but I don't believe that's staying. We'll have to test that and see. All right, and then oh, and it's time to go. Thank you all. I know we've got one more question. I can hang around and answer on SIBP, um, but thank you all very much for joining in today's webinar. Uh, don't end the session quite yet on me. Um, but for those of you that need to go, thanks for joining. Hope to see you again in a future release. And I'm going to answer the final question related to SIBP. And I think that was, where does it show you? Oh, shoot. And you know what? I don't have access to the, um, uh, how do you see when the dimensions aren't mapped? Megan, let me follow up with an email and get back to you on that. I apologize. I need to get into a different company and, and get a screenshot so that I can show you where that's at. And I think other than that, all of the questions have been answered. So if not, uh, feel free to reach out to us, ask us any more questions, and we'll be happy to uh, to answer. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye. Appreciate it.